1996 was a terrible year for S3. This is what the press had to say about the S3 Verge. In the January 1997 edition of the PC Player magazine, they reviewed the previous year and handed out some awards. Best hardware from 1996. We've got products like the Sidewinder 3D Pro, there's a dial-up modem, the Voodoo FX chip of course, and here the Yamaha DB50XG, a fantastic wavetable board. But they also handed out the awards for the worst of 1996 and look at that here. The biggest hardware disappointment is our S3 Verge. They are summarizing that the S3 Verge is affordable and readily available but it's really terrible for 3D accelerating and they're giving an example here, Descent 2. After installing the Verge patch it runs 5% slower and they're also mentioning issues with the direct 3D driver support. Moving into 1997, S3 launched a follow-up chip, the Verge DX. I found this beautiful media announcement from March of 1997 with the Diamond Stealth 3D 2000 Pro being announced and featuring the S3 Verge DX. They're setting expectations really high. Here, for example, they're talking about a 3x increase in 3D performance. Unfortunately, the footnote, well, it's not included in this online version, so we don't know what they're talking about. The Diamond version comes with four megabytes of RAM out of the box. They're talking here about a boost in 2D performance with a 20% higher score in Winmark, but again, the footnote doesn't work, so we don't know more details. And here they're confirming what we already know. The S3 Verge video cards were very popular with OEM manufacturers, but also available as retail, bundled with various games and applications. And you were looking at a price of around 200 US dollars. The video card for this video is from Lead Tech. It is the WinFast S600. DX and I have upgraded it to 4 megabytes of VRAM. It makes quite the difference. We have a range of games that we will be testing this video card with. We will also touch on DOS performance. This is where the S3 video cards are known to be very strong. We will be doing overclocking and also checking out the performance when lowering the resolution. Here we have something interesting. One of the readers asks, what is better, the PlayStation or PC for playing the game Tomb Raider, which is featured in this video. He's complaining that most magazines either focus on the PC or the consoles. They don't compare which version is the best. And the answer by PC player is, well, in most situations, the PlayStation version is better, unless you have a lot of money to spend on a high-end computer with a 3 d fx Voodoo. And this poor user has issues with his T-Online internet service provider. He's unable to download the 2 megabyte patch for Descent 2 to use with his Verge chip. I had a look at all the PC Player editions from 1997, but I really didn't find much information about the Verge DX until I got to the October edition, a really fantastic roundup of 12 3D graphics cards. Amongst the cards, we have classics like the ATI Rage Pro and of course, the legendary Laguna 3D from Cirrus Logic. NVIDIA featured Elsa supplied a pre-production sample of the River 128, which was well received. Of course, the 3 d effects Voodoo featured topping all the benchmark charts and look at that, here is our S3 Verge DX and unfortunately, they're saying here that this video card was the slowest of all the cards. At the end of the article is a really nice summary table with all the video cards here. We can see the graphics chips installed and here a indicator of the performance. And this is our S3 Verge DX, unfortunately only eight frames a second. The highlight is it's got good 2D performance, but of course the 3D performance is miserable. For the test system, we want something fast. The Verge can benefit from a strong CPU. We have an Athlon 64 system running at 2 GHz, 256 megabytes of RAM. For storage, a 
a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SD card with an SD to ID converter, the GoTek floppy emulator, and for the sound, the Sound Blaster ODG. In the previous videos, when we worked with the S3 Verge, we found that overclocking is basically essential. And yeah, this time I got to around 80 megahertz. I tried 84, but in croc I could see some of the pixels were sparkling and that's not a good sign. So I backed off a little bit and 80 megahertz was stable. I was able to complete all the tests at this frequency. The stock frequency, by the way, was 70 megahertz. So that's around 10 to 15% higher clock speed. Let's dive straight into Tomb Raider. So what we found here is with the RAM upgrade, we now get a shadow and the frame rate is quite a bit higher. So I urge you, if you want to play games with an S3 Verge, definitely upgrade the memory. So I was seeing between 15 and 20 FPS most of the time. This is quite a step up from the regular S3 Verge. No patches were required. The S3D patch for this game worked out of the box. There are situations where the FPS really drops down. I will try to put a scene on the screen. It's got some transparent textures, some vines going on, and here the performance drops into the single digits. So, but this is really the worst case situation. In most situations, it will run between 15 and 20 FPS, which I think was actually quite playable. Remember, this is at 640 by 480, which is quite a high resolution. If you want more performance, you can try the 512 by 384 resolution. That one double scans to 1024 by 768. We will check out some games running at lower resolutions later in this video. Croc is a little bit more demanding than Tomb Raider. We're playing at 640 by 480 and we're seeing around 15 FPS. So again, this is better than what we saw with the regular S3 Verge, but it's not near those 30 FPS, which most of you consider to be a requirement to be silky smooth. The game does look very nice. All the textures are filtered. It has that 3D rendered look. And again, we can lower the resolution to get better performance. So let's have a look at that. Here we're running at 512 by 384. The monitor detects a signal of 1024 by 768. It is double scanned and we're getting FPS sitting in the 20s. Quite playable and it's a good compromise. That resolution is a good compromise between performance and seeing enough details. Even faster is the 400 by 300 resolution. That one double scans to 800 by 600 and now we're getting 30 FPS. So the game is now really silky smooth, but it does look a bit rough and raw. I have another game showcasing the performance boost when we lower the resolution. This is Dark Forces 2, a direct 3D game from 1997. And here you really need to drop down the resolution at 640 by 480. This game is a bit challenging, but at 512 by 384, yeah, we're sitting in the low 20s. Sometimes it does dip into the high 10s. So this game definitely a challenge for the S3 Verge DX. Here we have it again, running at 400 by 300, between 20 and 30 FPS. So it runs a little bit nicer. But again, now at that resolution, sure, it's better than 320 by 200, but it does look quite pixelated. Descent 2 and Terminal Velocity, both of these games have compatibility issues with the Verge DX. We need to use a patch, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not too difficult to set up. Also, both of these games are hard-coded for 640x480. There's no way of dropping down the resolution. Descent 2, well, it does run a lot better on the Verge DX. I'm seeing between 20 and 30 FPS most of the time. So you could definitely call this playable. There are situations, again, with some transparency effects where the performance does drop down, but there are also other times where the FPS goes above 30. So all in all, this looks beautiful on the Verge, nicely uh, filtered textures and now the performance also not too bad. So yeah, I would say Descent 2 is reasonably enjoyable on the Verge DX. 
And here we have terminal velocity. Again, we needed a patch for this to work. Here, unlike in Descent 2, we don't get an error message. The game just hangs when you're trying to load it. But after patching, everything works fine. Again, hard-coded 640x480 resolution. No way to improving the FPS unless you want to disable the texture filtering, which you can do. So I saw between 20 and 30 FPS. Again, very playable. Every now and then a few severe stutters and slow slowdowns if there's going on too much on the screen. But all in all, yeah, a improved uh, situation compared to the regular Verge. And here we have terminal velocity with the bilinear filtering disabled. So now the textures are not filtered. You get that software rendered pixelated look. The frames per second is now sitting around the 30. So yes, the game runs smoother now. So this is an option available to you in many games to get a little FPS boost, but I believe not in all of them. A lot of what I do here on the channel has to do with looking back in the past and yeah, assessing how things were at the time. But the channel is really about what about now? What if you want to build a retro PC now? And so my clear recommendations, if you want to build a machine to enjoy the S3 Verge is you want to have a fast processor, the faster the better. The card really benefits from the extra performance. You definitely need to be doing some overclocking. The more the merrier. It also benefits greatly from that boost. The RAM upgrade is a necessity. Four megabytes, you will see higher FPS and also more effects in Tomb Raider, for example. The shadow doesn't appear with the two megabyte version and play around with lowering the resolution. So 512 by 384 is a nice balance between performance and still having enough details on the screen. And finally, is there, if there's an option to turn off texture filtering, that's also another wheel you can turn to get some more performance. And now let's look at MS-DOS. A lot of you mentioned in the previous video that I didn't really touch too much on that. So the compatibility of the S3 cards are legendary. There are two games that I've seen having issues on other video cards. Gods, for example, this is a game that doesn't scroll smooth on some of the thin clients that we looked at in the past, in past videos, working fine on the S3 and another game, Jazz. Jackrabbit is a classic that has scrolling issues on many video cards, but on the S3 it works silky smooth without any issues. So compatibility with games is a real highlight of the S3 Verge. The Verge also has a lot of utilities to make it better. For example, the Core 2.0 extensions. They add VESA 2.0 support. Here we have PC Player and it's showing the supported resolutions. But after we run the Core 2 extensions, we can see more colors are available at lower resolutions. For example, at 320 by 200, we can now use 16-bit or 24-bit colors. And many games in DOS do take advantage of that. Screamer 2 is an example. You can play it with 65 thousand colors at 320 by 200. S3 speed up is another nice utility which can boost the performance. Here we have a quick before and after. We're getting 318 FPS in Quake, but after using the S3 speed up utility, 370. So that's a nice little boost. So the takeaway is under DOS, you can't go wrong with the S3 Verge. Doesn't matter if it's the regular one or the improved DX. Compatibility is fantastic and there are many tools, official tools as well as utilities from the community that can squeeze out more performance or improve the compatibility. So we saw a bunch of games and how they perform on the improved Verge DX. We had a look at overclocking, resolution, scaling and I gave some advice what you can do to get the most out of these cards. And the performance, it is indeed improved over the regular Verge. However, there are some compatibility issues, so you need to patch many of the games, which is annoying. I didn't see any negatives to that, like anything that doesn't work, so seems to be fairly a straightforward process. In terms of performance, while it is improved, I did expect a lot more. So the 
3x performance boost that was hinted at in the press release from Diamond and S3. We didn't see anything close to that. So still, this video card is still quite slow and you can expect FPS in the 20s to 30s at most. The advantages of the S3 Verge are in other areas. DOS is the main one in terms of compatibility, but also performance and support with tools from the community as well as official tools. And the other highlight of this video card is driver support. It works in Windows 3.1, 95, 98. Out of the box in many uh, cases like 98 has integrated drivers. So it's really easy to get going. And availability and prices are also quite good. You shouldn't have a hard time finding one and chances are if you have a Socket 7 machine or you buy a Socket 7 machine, chances are it's got an S3 Verge installed. So all in all, the S3 Verge DX gets a neutral thumb. It's not a total disaster. The performance is okay, but at 640 by 480, it's still struggling to hold the 20 FPS, which is really sort of playable, but sort of not really. So yeah, and I had high expectations. Even with the overclocking, we couldn't get too much performance out of this video card. So that was my take on the Verge DX, but what is your opinion? Do you have some experience with this card? Leave them down below in the comments. I love reading them, getting up in the morning, a coffee, and then catching up on your comments. And you guys, you guys are awesome. You know so much. Um, this time I tried to be better prepared. I got some good feedback from past videos, but as always, there will be something I've missed and that's what the comments are for. And then I can do better in a future video. Talking about future videos, the Verge GX2 is one that I have planned, but this one might take me a little bit longer to produce because I still need to buy that card. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for the support. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. We have a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on there as well as a private Discord server. And give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. That's it for this one. Thank you so much. And I shall see you soon in another one.